Reimagining the financial architecture of climate action demands humane immigration and just trade policies. This was the message coming out of a side event at the Sharm El Sheikh Climate Change Conference COP27 on the role of the state in mobilizing and directing finance for climate and health. Speakers emphasized that fina finance flows remain inadequate and that effective climate action requires investments from both the private and public sectors. Poli political and economic leaders have called for just trade policies and highlighted the power of equitable international financial structures in addressing global problems. And it was to help us gain insight into proceedings at the ongoing summit, I earlier spoke to Yusuf Kalani, who is an environmental expert. He's currently in Sharm El Sheikh, the venue of the conference. And I asked him to bring us up to speed about events that have taken place so far at the summit and the message that was passed today at the ongoing summit. As you are well aware, um, there were the agreement reached in Paris in 2015. Um, countries were being um, encouraged to, you know, um, um, meet up and fulfill their commitment. But the um, COVID was um, uh, um, a challenge that happened that a lot of countries could not meet up. Then also the emergence of um, former U.S. President Trump, who pulled out of that agreement, and then some other countries could have to pull out. So it's affected um, um, the commitment from other big nations, which was a major challenge. Um, after the COVID, we had um, um, the um, COP26 in Glasgow, where, which was a renewed effort at um, you know, bringing the world leaders back to the table um, so that they commit themselves to the um, agreement made in 2016. So this year, um, today, Mr. Joe Biden was there who placed um, you know, um, some form of climate finance as funding um, to um, Asian countries and African countries. And I'm major, majorly concerned about the African countries now. Um, so uh, he's given us some support to African countries in mitigating the effect of um, climate change. Financing has been, you know, on the front burner of this particular summit. Well, African nations have made demands for monetary commitments from all these developed nations that you mentioned. Do you actually think that money will solve the issues of climate change in Africa? Um, yes, definitely. It is called a climate finance, climate funding. Um, for example, um, in Africa, we have the challenge of energy, and um, we have um, the economic challenges. Uh, a lot of the countries in Africa are world own countries. Now, when someone is hungry, you cannot tell him about climate change, even though it's going to affect him. Now, also, uh, we have a situation where we have um, um, governments in different African countries who are yet um, um, to give true leadership. You know, we can't run away from that. And as a result, um, we are not keeping to environmental um, environmental um, um, rules in our various countries. And that's why we are having the issue of flooding and every other thing. In order to combat these things, you need funding. For example, we are talking about renewable energy. And the solar panels are extremely expensive. Now, if we talk about the effect of climate change, you have to look at the costs, and 95% of the costs of the ozone layer depletion is caused by the bigger nation. Now, the effect is not restricted to them, the effect comes to us. So, they need to commit some funds to help African nations. So, if we are saying that we should stop the use of coal, for example, we have to use alternative energy sources, which are expensive and which must be affordable if you want the African continent to abide by their agenda. So, we need this support. Well, that was Yusuf Kelani, environmental analyst, giving us updates about ongoing discussions at the COP27 in Egypt.